Hey! What is going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So, today I wanted to have a discussion about how the songs in Ruby tell the story better than the story does itself, and I really want to explain why that is and go into why I think that the songs tell the story better than the story does itself. So sit back, relax, I hope you all enjoy, and let's go ahead and get started. So, when it comes to the Ruby songs, the soundtracks, everything having to do with the songs, and then you have the story itself, I think that when it comes to the show and when it comes to the songs, there's a big difference when it comes to explaining the story. I mean, looking at the songs, for example, the songs really go into detail of the characters, what they've gone through, and they really tell you what the characters are thinking at the same time. Now, when it comes to the show, yeah, the story has really dropped the ball, and it's not as good as it used to be, that's for certain. And while at certain moments it can still be okay at times, it really doesn't go into the great details that the songs really go into. It doesn't really express what the songs do, which is a problem with the series itself, and it's something that it really needs to work on when it comes to its writing. I mean, for example, if the songs are telling us more about the characters than the show was doing itself, yeah, then that means that the show is not doing its job like the songs are doing. And that shows you how excellent the songs can really be. I mean, there are even points where the songs even tell some of the plot lines better than the story does itself. Which, I'm going to get into some of these details right now. So, let's go ahead and take a quick look at some areas where the songs do better. So, when it comes to Adam's character, for example, Lion Eyes really does get you into the mind of Adam, really showing you why he believes what he believes. And that definitely does wonders for his character and understanding him better in his ideology. But then when you look at the series itself, he was just nothing more than a crazy stalker ex-boyfriend in the end. They didn't go into why he was a revolutionist. They didn't go into why he became the way he became. They just threw that away and just made him be the way he was. Now, I do want to make a quick comparison here. When you look at the song, I'm the One, I'm the One is about Emerald and Mercury. It is their theme. And what I think was good about the story of the show, though, they added on to Mercury, his character, for example, with the conflict with his father. Now, this was good. I have no problems with that. And then when it came to Emerald, they kind of just went into a little bit, but they didn't go into a whole lot other than she sees Cinder as like a teacher, kind of a motherly figure. Now, when it comes to Neo, as of right now, hopefully Volume 7 will go into a backstory, one thing really expressed Neo, and it expressed her relationship with Roman Torchwick as to where he was the one who changed her life forever, that he was the one that saved her from her misery and despair of being on her own. And that is where I'm the one, as of right now, really goes into Neo's backstory, as to where the show itself hasn't gone into that backstory yet. But still, it does give you more about Neo. Now, when you look at Ruby Rose, for example, the series itself sidelined her in Volumes 4 and 5. I mean, she hardly did anything, especially in Volume 5, to where she really didn't do anything, just asked irrelevant questions. And when you look at Ruby's character, the big thing that the songs do for Ruby they really give more depth to her character. They put you within her mind, telling you that on the surface, she may look like she's a happy girl, but in reality, on the inside, she's actually very sad. Red Like Rose's part two really goes into that, that she actually didn't understand why her mother died, and that it really tortured her that her mother did leave her when she did. I mean, of course, it's not like Summer intentionally meant to die, but the thing is, it really goes into the turmoil, and it goes into the pain that she really went through over this. But the big thing is, when you look at the series itself, well, it just continuously either brings her up every once in a good long while, or just teases you with a flashback like it did in Volume 6, not really adding to any of that. Showing you that the song itself did more justice than the series itself as of right now has even done for Ruby's character and the relationship that she had with Summer. And that is a pretty big issue there. Now, I want to go into another character here from Team Ruby, and that next character to look at is Weishni. Now, when you look at Weishni, of course, Volume 4 really did start to go more into the issues with her father. Of course, Volume 1 started this off, and 
we start to understand that with Mirror Mirror and the series of Mirror Mirror songs, we understand that she was alone and that because of everything that's gone on within her life, it made her cold to others. And Volume 1, like I stated, started to make you understand that she had issues with her father. And then, of course, Volume 2 added a bit more to that, which was pretty interesting. Then Volume 3, yet again, whenever Weiss has her conversation with her sister, and Weiss tells her to disconnect herself from the company, and that maybe she should talk to her father, it just shows you that there is more issues between Weiss and her father. And of course, whenever he tries to call and she doesn't answer it during the Vital Festival, yeah, that really shows you that Weiss had some issues with her dad. So it starts to set up the whole thing between Weiss and her father. And then, of course, Volume 4 starts to go a little bit into these details. Now, this was actually pretty good to see. This was good that we needed to see that there was a conflict. Now, of course, like I said, they foreshadowed this in previous volumes, but finally seeing this really did help things out. And the songs themselves really help you understand that Weiss has had issues growing up. Volume 5, while Volume 5 is a very awful volume, the one thing that Volume 5 actually does do is it does express that Weiss's father, during Weiss's 10th birthday, stated that he never cared for her mother. And that the real importance to him was more or less, if anything, the She Does Company. So it shows you that Jacques, he's not really a good guy. <laughs> and this is good that we did get to see some of these things. But ultimately, Atlas should be the end game for Weiss's arc. And then, of course, when it comes to Blake, the songs most certainly did more justice for her character. Now, of course, at the end of Volume 4, the one thing I did enjoy was Sun trying to help Blake realize that friends are there to help, that you shouldn't run away because they are there through thick and thin, and that's the point. But when it comes down to it, like Morning Follows Night, as well as this time, I think really expresses a lot of things so much better than what happened within her actual arc. And thinking back on it, from what the setup was back in Volume 1, I think even from Shadows really explains a lot of things better when it comes to even the fond discrimination in itself. And I really have to say that Blake, I think, in the beginning was written decently. And then I think that after that, I think the ball was really kind of dropped on her story. I mean, some elements of it were good, but for the most part, it could have been a lot better. And then when it comes to Yang, yeah, I think she got the short end of the stick because when it came to her arc, I didn't think it was very good. What I really did like was the song Armed and Ready. I thought that was good, but when it comes down to it, Yang's arc didn't result very well, and Volume 5 was definite proof of that. I just think that her story definitely could have been told a lot better. I thought Ignite was interesting, but when it comes down to it, I think Yang got the short end of the stick. And some characters do get treated really well with both the songs and the series. There are certain points to where the series did write some things well. I mean, I will at least give it that. When it comes to Crow, for example, I think that Bad Luck Charm was excellent as a song. I also really do like what they did in Volume 4 about how Crow believed that his own semblance was a curse. And I did like that concept. I think that it went over very well, actually. I mean, that's an instance where the series itself did something good, I think. And... You know, when it comes to Crow's development in Volume 6, I really do like that he realized he shouldn't have blindly followed Ospin. That was good for him, too. Now, I do think these are some good things that the series has done. Certain areas that it has done things well when it comes to writing characters. But overall, looking at it, when I have listened to these songs and I've watched the series itself, there are times to where... The show has not really done as well as the songs, and the songs usually, in my opinion, really do shine over the series itself when it comes to telling a story or whatever tells the character's point of view. And one big major thing also is that what they could have done in Volume 6, as I stated, they could have actually started to go based off Red Light Roses Part 2 and started to go into Ruby's character, and instead they gave her far too many speeches that were quite obnoxious after a while and then of course it didn't really do anything but tease summer and they didn't go into a flashback of at least something between the relationship of ruby and summer as to where the song red like roses part two really gave it more justice and with maria 
Yeah, there could have been a moment where Ruby could have actually brought up her own mother. There was an opportunity there. Another issue that I really had, and I thought that this was a big problem as well, is, well, Bumblebee. My biggest problem with that is it was just rushed rather than actually having a real conflict between Blake and Yang and trying to actually improve upon the conflict between the two and help their relationship better. They just acted like everything was going to be okay. And when it comes to the song, All That Really Matters, well, you learn that Yang is distant from Blake after the whole issue. I mean, yeah, she's glad that Blake's back, but she is afraid of even trusting her after what happened. And it really goes into the mindset of what Yang was thinking about how she would give Blake another chance, but she's going to be cautious because of what happened. And I think that song was so much better than what the series presented in Volume 6 between Blake and Yang. Now, of course, also, I think the song Divide was so good for Salem. I think that was a great motivation for Salem's character. And, of course, the Ospin salem backstory completely changed that. But, you know, if you like the Ospin salem backstory, there's nothing wrong with that. But I particularly am not a fan of that backstory. But I think that Divide would have been better having Salem try to fight off against Ospin because Ospin is just using everybody for his own desires as to where Salem thinks that he's wrong and that she was going to try to take him down for that. I actually liked that intention a whole lot better than what the backstory delivered. I don't think the backstory was as good as the song Divide was. And that's just a personal opinion, though. But it just feels so very disconnected from what the story was setting up. And I just have several problems with that, but that's just my opinion. But overall, I do think that the songs really go into characters better. I think at certain points it tells the story better. I think that the songs are just very well thought out, and I think the story drops the ball at certain points that it could have most definitely done better when it comes to characters, when it comes to motivations, and when it comes to plot lines even at certain points. And it just leads me to question, why is Jeff Williams not a writer? Because he would be so fantastic if he were to write the story for Ruby. But that's just my opinion. But anyways, let me know what you think down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, hit the video with a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Share this video with your friends if you found this informative or useful. And follow me on Discord. Link is in the description down below. But anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today. And remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.